Hello, I thought I would do a quick review of this, which is uh, a Bresselmeyer uh, cornet mouthpiece from Vienna in Austria. Uh, quite unusual, not many people will have these. It comes, uh, it's a screw rim mouthpiece, and it is related to this, which is the Bresselmeyer trumpet mouthpiece. Uh, this is a rotary trumpet mouthpiece really, they do various mouthpieces, this is a rotary one. It uh, has the G2 cup, uh, the G rim and the G backbore, so it's a, quite a large mouthpiece. The rims come off and I can take that rim, uh, the cups also come off. You can get various cups. Um, the reason why I'm playing on this for trumpet is that the cup is quite open in the bottom. Um, it's a V-shaped bottom of the cup and it has quite a large throat. It's a number 25 throat, which I find makes it easier to switch from trumpet to cornet. Uh, this is a, for me, this has always been a problem because I have to do a lot of cornet playing. Jumping back to trumpet can be quite difficult. So I've found that one solution to that is to use uh, this style of mouthpiece which has got more V in the bottom of the cup. There are other mouthpieces um, which have that type of configuration. But um, this is the trumpet mouthpiece room which screws on to the cornet mouthpiece. Now this looks a little bit like a shilky mouthpiece as does the trumpet mouthpiece. And I wonder if that's because this traditional V and E shape is something that Schilke was used to when he lived in Austria. I don't know if that's true. But uh, you can see from that round section there, which is very similar to a Schilke mouthpiece, and even the profile of the rim is quite similar. So you take the trumpet uh, mouthpiece rim off and uh, put it on the cornet uh, bottom part. Now this is an F1. Uh, F1 um, it's a flugel mouthpiece really. They do I think seven different cup depths and shapes in a flugel mouthpiece in three different fittings. Um, first fitting is uh, German which is like a trumpet mouthpiece fitting for German fanfare bands. They also do the standard Morse taper for um, a Yamaha type instruments and as a special order they will manufacture one in a cornet shank. Now I needed that because my flugelhorn has a cornet receiver so I'm a little bit restricted. This one is the second largest that they make. They do an F0 which is even deeper but to give you an idea, it's um, not quite as deep as a Dennis Wick no letter uh, mouthpiece. The throat is a number 20, which is big, but the Dennis Wicks are usually 16, 15, 14 uh, drill size. Um, so that is a fairly tight uh, backbore for a cornet or throat. It makes up for it because of this. The backbore is absolutely huge. The edge of this mouthpiece here is like a razor blade. It's If you've ever seen a Monette Prana mouthpiece, it's like the bottom of that. It's a huge backbore. I'm thinking it's equivalent to something like a Warburton 12 star or maybe even bigger than that. It's uh, And that makes it a much freer blowing mouthpiece than it would appear to be. Now, in use on the cornet, one of the most interesting things about it is the intonation. Uh, I found this to be a very even mouthpiece um, going up and down the register. Uh, interval C's across three C's is um, pretty much spot on. Uh, I tend to get sharper as I play higher. This is only just a fraction sharper on a top C compared to bottom C. On the flugel where I can play a pedal C, 
um, honestly, uh, rather than faking it. Uh, it's in tune as well. So from that point of view, it's a very good mouthpiece. As far as its ability um, on the cornet is concerned, well, the first thing you'll notice about this mouthpiece is that it's actually quite long compared to Dennis Wick. It's about the same length, I think, as a back cornet mouthpiece, maybe slightly shorter. I don't have a back cornet mouthpiece to test this, to do a comparison. Um, so it's longer, and longer uh, mouthpieces tend to be brighter because uh, they have uh, effectively tighter back bores. But as I said, um, this gets around that by having this wafer-thin metal here on the end. So I don't find it to be hugely bright. It's not like a Wick B mouthpiece. Uh, what it doesn't have is that kind of softness or fluffiness that you can get with Dennis Wick. It's the closest thing I've seen to this is the Alliance uh, A series mouthpiece, which is an in between V shaped type cup. This has got to be something like that, really, in, in profile. They do have drawings of them on the Wrestlemeyer website, but I noticed since they rebuilt the website, that information is only available in German. You have to download it as a PDF in the English version, it's missing. So, um, what is it actually like to play on? Well, this rim, the G rim, is, uh, to explain how this works, the interface, you can just see me unscrewing it there, that interface is, uh, that cut there is 16.4 millimetres. So that means that the smallest size of rim that they could possibly make on this is 16.4 millimetres. Uh, the G rim is about 16.7, so it's not far off a uh, Dennis Wick 3 or a Vincent Bach 3 size, but it is very flat, very flat uh, profile, and it has a relatively sharp inner edge. And this is to aid with articulation on the rotary trumpet, um, and that's why this is the main um, rim that they sell. But they make about 20 other rims. Uh, they make um, copies of Vincent Bach 3C that fits this, which is slightly larger. Um, one and a half C, one and a quarter C, uh, plus lots of other variations on their rotary trumpet rims. For example, this is the W rim, which is very wide indeed. I'll let you see the difference. That is the standard G rim, but extended so that it has more around the outer edge uh, to aid with endurance. And I think that this is a possible, might possibly be quite good for brass band playing, um, where I have found wider rims to be helpful. Um, I'm experimenting with that at the moment. So you get a variety of possible rims. This is possibly not the best one. Uh, it takes a bit of getting used to, but once you are, it does actually sound rather nice. So, I'm going to play a hymn tune. I'm not totally warmed up. Oh, red hymn book. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see what I can uh, come up with here. So, it is a fairly mellow sound, um, it's definitely a cornet sound, uh, this instrument, Yamaha instrument, is quite tight, anyway, but um, 
it's the sort of mouthpiece that you can, if you want, really, really push. So it can be quite trumpety. Um, but as people have often said, it's better to start with a brighter mouthpiece because you can make that sound um, more mellow. Uh, I do find it requires quite a lot of warming up on compared to the Dennis Wick. And the reason for that is the targets are smaller. It's a smaller throat. Uh, getting the sweet spot is more difficult on this than it would be on something like a Wick too, where you just bung it in and it's going to sound very good from the beginning. But in the longer term, this is probably a more viable mouthpiece because we'll play in it for longer. So I hope you found that interesting. I know it's been a bit of a long video, quite a lot to talk about. And uh, let me know what you think uh, about the Bresselmeyer system in general, whether you think that's uh, any use on Coronet. Bye.